I can get started. So uh, welcome everyone. I've mentioned that we're recording this program uh, and thank you all uh, so much for joining us for tonight's program called Low Connects, the Indigenous Surrealism of Jorge Dominguez Cruz. I'm Dr. Tola Porter, the Low Art Museum's educator for academic and public programs. And this program is co-sponsored by the University of Miami American Studies program, and it was initiated by Dr. Chrissy Arce, the Director of American Studies. Tonight, Mexican Indigenous artist Jorge Dominguez Cruz will be in discussion with Dr. Arce about his influences, which range from Tenacuasteco roots and culture, to the Mexican muralist, to Salvador Dali's surrealistic style. Before we launch into the program, I'd like to cover just a little bit of housekeeping. I have um, already uh, started the captions, so you should be able to see closed captions if you hit this button. And also later there'll be time for Q&A, I hope. And uh, please type your questions into the chat and then we will be able to uh, get to those at the end of the program and I'll read them out and um, we'll hear back uh, some answers. So we have some very exciting new exhibitions at the museum right now that have just opened in October. Iris Eichenberg, Where Words Fail, a very fun and quirky order up, the pop art of John Miller, and soon to come in February is Reckonings and Reconstructions, Southern Photography from the Do Good Fund. Some great programming coming up, especially I'd like to point out to all those who've joined us uh, that on Thursday at from six to eight, there'll be a reception where we'll all get to meet um, Jorge in person and uh, get a chance to look at his works of art, which will be very exciting. There's also several programs um, that are uh, virtual that I'm running at the low. One is our interns have created a program about AI and the future of art. That's on Friday. And then I have a, a recurring monthly program called Slow Looking, and I hope hope you'll join us for that. And then a members program, if you're a member of the museum, it's a fun uh, early morning discussion with uh, curator Caitlin Swindell. <clears throat> okay, Dr. Chrissy Arce is the director of University of Miami's program of American studies. And uh, she is the instigator behind this. She wrote to me and said, hi, I have this amazing artist coming. What can we do? And I said, are you kidding? Let's, let's put on a show. Um, so uh, this is the kind of collaboration um, and reach that we can get at a university art museum and on a campus. And so I'm very, very grateful to Dr. Arce uh, for bringing this exciting artist to us. And I turn the floor over to her. Well, thanks again, Tola, Dr. Porter, for your amazing generosity, for getting this program off the ground so quickly. Um, when I learned of Jorge's visit, I was ex I was exhilarated because I've been a fan of his art for, for many years now. And I think that as we go through the slides, everyone here will see why. Um, I am now, uh, as of a few months ago, the Director of American Studies. And part of what the program wants to do is really create an expansiveness of what the many Americas are. What does it mean to be American? There's all different ways to be American, to think American, to sound American, and to and to um, dream American. And so part of what is so interesting with Jorge's um, work is um, surrealism, the whole oniric um, dream state that is also, um, that unites past, present, and future into this um, very sort of um, visceral reality. So when we think about American studies, there's all sorts of ways in which we imagine it, but Miami as terra firma, or tierra firme of all of the hemisphere is really sort of the perfect place to explore all these different um, views of America. And I do want to recognize the Mexican consulate, um, the Vipoima, the, the windows, the cultural windows of cultural exchange and Amayal cultural organization, Mexican cultural organization, who um, took the initiative to go ahead and bring Jorge to Miami um, as he was in Dallas ex um, exhibiting his work and also creating. He just recently finished a huge mural in the Women's Museum as part of the Mundo Latino Feria. So you can see Jorge here working as a part um, in, in, in Dallas um, 
as part of this museum and a part of this initiative. And he's visited Texas. He's almost sort of a, a fixed um, artistic figure now in, in Texas. And, and, and Jorge, by the way, has been all over the world. He's been in Germany and Spain, all over the United States. And he's toured um, with his art all over Mexico as well. So he really is now an international figure and we're really happy to have him here in Miami. And I'm grateful again to the American Studies Program um, which I'm now the director of for 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 bringing this on, and as well as um, the Mexican Cultural um, Institute at the consulate and Amiel Cultural Organization. So let me tell you a little bit about Jorge. Um, Jorge is a, a self-taught painter. He comes from a small village called Mata de Otate in the municipio of Chontla Veracruz, which is on the um, on the Gulf Coast of Mexico, and this um, this community that he's from is a is a is a Tenic community, which is a small Mayan speaking um, variant that um, uh, and he's part of these larger migrations of of Mayan of <clears throat> Mayan indigenous groups that migrated north from the south and sort of settled in the Huasteca region, which is a region in the Gulf Coast and. This community, which um, maybe has about 500 people, they're all native Thinic speakers. And part of what is interesting about Jorge and the way he sort of realized himself as an artist and as a painter, um, and his he'll tell a little bit, um, tell us a little bit about this in a few minutes, is the way in which um, his um, community, his traditions, his native tongue, but also the um, the fauna and flora created his 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 palette his his the colorism and the bright colors of the um visual palette that he that he creates for us as an artist um in this when he was four years old he, when he would go out he was a um his family were farmers and when he would accompany his family out to the fields he would gaze up this is in his own words he would gaze up into the sky and look at the blue sky and the billowing clouds and then he would examine the flowers and look at all the different um colors that were part of this countryside and then would go home and paint on the rocks so he describes um sort of grabbing anything he could he could get his hands on and just sort of coloring on the rocks and as those would wash away with the with the um rain he ended up fabricating his own his own his own paints with the herbs the flowers the chiles that he would crush in a mortar and pestle and he would make his own paints out of the um out of the ingredients in his mother's kitchen or that he found out in the countryside and then later on he learned that painting could be much more finely accomplished with um with a pincel with a brush so then he fashioned together his own brushes with the hair of the animals, either the um, the cow's tails or the horse's tails, and he would tie them to a stick and made his own brush, his own brushes, his own paint brushes, his own paints. And then right around middle school, he says that he opened up his first book and um, he realized he had seen Leonardo da Vinci. So one of his first, and we'll see that in the in the in one of the slides later on of, of his latest piece, um, Ella Temporal. Leonardo da Vinci was one of his first sort of inspirations. And then in middle school, um, when he learned a little more, he was opened up to the visual panorama of the Mexican muralists, of Diego Rivera, uh, Clemente Orozco, and David Alfaro Siqueiros. And so once he learned about these, these became um, sort of the initial pillars of his artistic career until he traveled to Mexico City on his own when he realized that all great artists need to go to the big city. And so he followed his path to Mexico City where these muralists had gone, both Rivera, Orozco, and um, Siqueiros. And he became acquainted with um, the works of Salvador Dali and the Surrealists. And so these are sort of the three main pillars of, of his influences, but really, Although those those artists were important in his in his grounding, I mean in his formation, his grounding really is and always is his community, his Thenic speaking community in the Huasteca. So that's why it's not he's a Mexican surrealist. He's an indigenous Thenic surrealist who always goes back to his roots, his community, his language, traditions, customs, 
sounds and he communicates that visually through his form which is which is the um which is painting um so i'd like to um sort of end my my biography there because he then has has traveled and done exhibits in 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 city centers in mexico um and uh, like i said previously across europe so he's really um been taken on almost by word of mouth um the way i met him here in miami and everyone likes him, a good story was someone through the mexican cultural institute and through ml organization had seen his work on facebook and invited him to showcase his work and then from there someone bought a painting and and um and showed it to someone in in in, in dallas and that's these sort of circuits these now national and transnational circuits of his artwork has really made itself um, in a very organic fashion. So that's why these sorts of programming, Tola, is really important. And I'm really grateful that that um, in um, in really the blink of an eye, we were able to get this together. So I want everyone to welcome Jorge Dominguez Cruz, um, a self-made artist, um, 37, tienes 37 años, Jorge. 37 years old, very young. In, in artist age, but incredibly prolific. And tonight we're gonna look at um, only eight of his pieces on slides. We could look at a lot more, but um, eight slides that he shared with us and we're gonna comment um, on two. So this piece is called San Jorge Hacia la Batalla, St. George Goes to Battle. I'm not sure. And this next piece is called Dipak. And I think that's in Tenek. Jorge, eso es Tenek, no? And for the audience, I'm going to be doing a little bit of translation here, simultaneous translation. So I'll start in English, translate for Jorge. And any questions you have for him, I will, I'll be happy to translate if you don't want to put them in the chat in Spanish. So this is Niño de Maíz or the Child of the Corn. Huasteca extravagante, so extravagant Huasteca, and I'll remind the audience that the Huasteca is the specific name of the region that Jorge is from. It's called the Huasteca, and it comes from the Huasteca um, indigenous groups who were also originally Mayan speakers. Um, This one is called Poderosa, Grandiosa y Maravillosa, so powerful, majestic, and marvelous. Ella atemporal, or a temporal she. And we can see here clearly his, his influence um, by Da Vinci. And we'll pause here for a moment. This one is called Dialogos, or Dialogues. I'll invite um, our, our resident art historian to maybe comment a little bit. Well, certainly. I. You know, I, I don't want to step over the artist's own ideas, and I know he's got a lot and, and can explain this very much, but I was really taken by this work in contrast with this work. So uh, we can see them if I, I'll move back and forth between the two. Um, this obviously we have, a, you know, a, a, a pyramid and there's still greenery going on over here. But on this side, we have more of a technological looking space and the, the trees uh, are denuded, right? So, so something is certainly uh, in comparison here. But I, I do love the idea that the, the Mayan warrior is still strong coming, coming up here. But I would turn it over to Jorge to um, discuss for sure. Jorge, si quieres comentar tu, tu, tu cuadro. Dame chance para que traduzca cada, cada dos, tres oraciones. Ok. Halvin Chigit, Nana en Quilón, Tuwa, Tichapal y Lantenec, Inguachinenec, Tuwa, Tian Apach, Tian Pam, Cha, Tian Costa, Te, Tuwa, Tichapal y Albel, Daja, Sunuwash, Hayechan, Albel Talab, Ancul del Talab, Tuwa, Estal, Tuwa, Ti México. Halvin Chigit. Ah, esta es mi lengua materna, Tenec, y con mucho orgullo aquí lo expreso para ustedes para que escuchen y, y, y 
de alguna manera sientan también esa, esa conexión o ese orgullo, así como lo siento yo, de, de mi cultura y de mis raíces. Eh, aquí... De, déjame interrumpir. This is my native language, ten, uh, Tenek. And I've, um, I've greeted you in my native language so that you can get a feeling and, and, and have that connection with my community in the same way I do. I'm very proud of being Tenek. Um, and um, it's transmitted in my art. So I've, I've expressed that to you so that you can hear it and sound it. Sí, en, en esta obra expreso lo que siento, lo que pienso, lo que he vivido y, y lo que imagino. Eh, son sueños, son vivencias, experiencias y es un gran diálogo eh, de, de entre lo moderno y, y lo pasado. Eh, vemos eh, las edificaciones eh, ancestrales, ahí algunas pirámides eh, y todo ese, ese caos que existe en la modernidad, esos cambios, es, esas estructuras contemporáneas, edificios, eh, de alguna manera que están invadiendo poco a poco este, la naturaleza, están contaminando, y, y es, un, es una crítica muy, este, eh, tanto como positiva como eh, negativa, pero hay... Ok, cosas... vamos a parar ahí un instante. So these, this, this, this painting is a product of my dreams, of my experiences, of the past and the present, you'll see that there's the um, technology is invading into the in, in nature and there's um, it, it, it is a I guess I, I miss I forgot the middle part, but but it is a product of um, it is both positive and also net. it's a criticism at the same time. It's forward looking in its positivity. So it's not a negative painting in that sense. It really is a dialogue between past and present with an eye towards the future. Uh, son, uh, hay elementos también que sobresalen eh, y que son parte de mi cultura, de mis orígenes, como la gran celebración de Día de los Muertos, donde vemos este cráneo ahí decorado, porque es, es la celebración entre la vida y la muerte. Entonces, eh, plasmo... Un, un instante. So there are elements of my own traditional practices. For example, you'll see the 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 the, the cranium in the middle is part of a, a practice that's important for us, which is the practice of the other los muertos. So you'll see the intervention of my own um, traditional culture here in this painting. Y pues todo ese esa sabiduría ancestral que está proyectado entre estos planos que que por ahí es... Se, se llegan a, a, a ver como por ejemplo el, el inframundo el plano terrenal y lo cósmico entonces eh, están en ese en ese escenario eh, dialogando conviviendo diferentes eh, personajes okay so what's really interesting he just said that and the ancestral knowledge there's different levels and different forms of ancestral knowledge that become communicated here the inframundo, which is the, the netherworld with the, 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 the earth and with the cosmos. So there's all three planes of ancestral knowledge that communicate themselves, communicate with each other in this painting. Estos personajes están eh, actuando en, este, en esta escena para darle vida, para darle color, para darle... Eh, ese, esa, esa luz a todo ese, esa escena entre lo, entre lo moderno y, y lo antiguo entonces eh, estamos viendo el movimiento la, la alegría y esa búsqueda con uno mismo con ese mundo interno ese, ese mundo que, que está, que, que es un compromiso que tenemos que, que buscar y para poder dar así como lo hago yo a través de mi pintura so this is um, truly th these three elements, the past, present, future, the uh, antiquity and modernity are not mutually exclusive, but they're constantly in a tense engagement with each other. And there's this um, engagement that I have with myself and that they have, that we have with ourselves, that one has with oneself to continue looking and paving a way forward through these 
critical connections, these critical dialogues between our um the our ancestral knowledge, between the nether world, the the the, the cosmic world, and the world that that we inhabit now. Ahí en primer plano hay un dios prehispánico que está presenciando todo lo la situación, eh, todo el, el la, la, las, las diferentes escenas donde vemos personajes que están en esa búsqueda porque de alguna manera es lo que está provocando mi cultura, eh, sigue eh, viva, sigue generando. Entonces tenemos ese ese compromiso también de, de, de buscar nuestro origen, de, de, de comprenderlo, de tenerlo presente como estos personajes que están eh, adentrándose hacia la tierra por debajo de una pirámide en esa búsqueda con uno mismo. Um, Jorge just said that you'll notice in the foreground there's an indigenous, um, an indigenous warrior who's sort of um, bearing testimony to the entire scene. And that's important because what he's his part of his project as an artist is to continue to engage with um, indigenous art as a present and indigenous culture as something that is present and alive, not something that exists only in antiquity, but that has its way um, forward. So that 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 particular uh, warrior, that particular figure that's in the foreground is a witness as, as part of that ancestral past, but also the way forward, looking towards oneself and looking within oneself to recognize that, to, to what he said was maybe sort of look towards the past to understand it, to rescue it, but also to, to engage with it critically as a, as a path forward, not to ignore it. And that, that is, um, something important for indigenous communities and his community because they're not dead they're alive they speak their language and so that's that's part of what he was stating here in his um in his reading of his painting chrissy as we go to the next one maybe we could talk a little bit about process you know how he makes the paintings eh, en cuanto eh, sigamos en la siguiente diapositiva será posible que hables un poco sobre el proceso como empiezas a, 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 a crear tu, una, una obra de arte? Eh, la inspiración viene el vivir, el ver, el estar ahí conviviendo, compartiendo, dialogando con, con mi cultura, siendo parte de ella, eh, participando. Es ahí donde nace toda esa motivación esa inspiración para crear estas obras que, 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 que comparto con, con los públicos. Eh, vemos, por ejemplo, los voladores de papá. Un momento. So part of his process is actually very much experiential. It's living, breathing, eating, uh, living within his community. It's not a static process that he observes something. He's part of a community so that reciprocity, that act of actually participating with, engaging with his community is what binds his sort of artistic mind. And he was just going to mention the voladores de Papantla. We'll see in the in the far left um, two images that appear to be sort of um, circling. Those are the voladores de Papantla. Continua. Eh, yo vivo, yo, yo participo también, bailo, grito, río, este, hablo mi lengua, estoy en esa constante búsqueda, en esa constante evolución, transformación, y es eso lo que yo muestro en cada uno de mis pinturas, donde vemos las situaciones que, 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 que vemos en la actualidad. Por ejemplo, eh, ahí hay un grupo de, de, de personajes eh, en, en la parte... Este, eh, en la parte aún bajo de, de baja de, de la pintura donde llevan eh, cargando un juego de pelota que descubrieron ellos debajo de una pirámide entonces eh, es eso mi cultura lo que lo que me, me hace crear estas obras entonces ahí yo plasmo lo que lo que yo pienso lo que yo siento lo que vivo y, y, y estoy siempre comunicando mensajes positivos mensajes eh, ejemplares eh, que, que tenemos que estar en esa constante eh, evolución eh, en, en, un, 
en un diálogo eh, con mi cultura. So we were talking about um, a Mexican detail, un detalle de México, and in particular, if I if I recall correctly, we were think we were talking about the um, the far right corner and <clears throat> where the boys had recovered um, an indigenous artifact from the Mayan period of the Juego de Pelota. No, there you go. Excellent. And so um, the ball, the um, Mayan ball, and so part of the recovery of this is also a celebration of tradition. If I remember, that's what Jorge que decías que que la recuperación de juego de pelota en la, en la parte inferior que señalaste es una forma en que se reconecta eh, el cielo con los voladores con la pelota que está socavada, ¿no? So part of like unearthing these artifacts is also a, not just a recuperation of a, of a glory long past, but also a celebration of what is and what can be. Entonces, el, lo que estoy diciendo, creo que, que dijiste que el recu recuperar este artefacto no es apenas recuperar algo del pasado, sino insertarlo dentro del presente y la posibilidad de un futuro glorioso, no solo un pasado glorioso maya. ¿sí? A, a, ¿Quisieras comentar otra cosa, Jorge? Eh, pues aquí también expreso todo lo que lo que tengo, lo que, lo que soy, de alguna manera lo que, lo que es mi cultura es, es una explosión, es una diversidad de, de formas, de colores y en ese, en ese movimiento porque somos eh, alegría, eh, México es fiesta, es, es vida, entonces vemos eh, diferentes este, escenas, eh, territorios, montañas, eh, eh, planos eh, eh, y sobre todo eh, el mar que, que, que está ahí eh, también en el fondo eh, siempre al presente porque es México aquí estoy hablando un poco en general pero eh, de alguna manera hablar de México es demasiado pero aquí es solo un pequeño detalle de México So um, what he was saying there's a diversity of color of form and of movement and so Although it, it, it's a general, it's a generalization to say a detail of Mexico or a Mexican detail, um, he's trying to highlight that sort of um, the the ways in which these explosions of 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 form, of light, of color, and of movement are part of what makes um, Mexico such a vibrant country in general. Even though he always paints from the specificity of his locale, which is the Huasteca and Atenec region. He's generalizing here to talk about how in Mexico in general, there, there is this explosion of, of life, of what he calls life and, and, and happiness and, and joy, life and joy. And that's what he wants to communicate in his, in his art is this idea of joy. Una última cosa sobre esta pintura. Ahí está la palabra. This painting. Ahí está la palabra México, ahí oculta. Eh, eh, ahora así que aquí el que lo ve el espectador tiene que encontrar esa esa palabra ahí escrita México ahí está eh, so ahí vemos. he wanted to he wanted to point out to the spectators that he has he has hidden the word Mexico the, in inside the painting and so the the I don't oh, see wow. it so you really <laughs> have to look you have to look because he's inscribed it within the painting so that it's not necessarily visible. I, I, I don't know if anyone sees it. I don't, I don't, but it's sort of like a, a where's Waldo, but that, y, y, y por qué lo inscribiste ahí? Ah, porque eso es lo que estoy de alguna manera este, reflejando ahí, la riqueza, la alegría, la vida, lo que es mi país. So that's really sort of beautiful. So it, it, it subs, so the, the inscribed within this painting about, you know, Mexican joy and the diversity, the biodiversity, the, the philosophical diversity, linguistic, there's so many languages that are living indigenous languages alongside, not just indigenous languages. There's also um, Italian Veneto, Veneto, there's um, Plattsdeutsch, there's all these diverse languages that are spoken in in Mexico. But what he 
by inscribing and making it part of the um, substrate of the of the of the painting is that it is all nonetheless Mexico. Um, Hold on, says, has One... found it, but I don't see it. <laughs> yeah. Next to the violinist. The mountains are the M, and then it flows E. Oh, I see it. Now I see it. Now I see it. Really? Beautiful. Yes, the mountains are the M, and then the little inlets in the river are the E. Okay. Yeah, and here's the X. Oh, wow. (laughs) I I don't know if I can find. Is is this the O? Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. So that's the thing that was recovered by the people. And it's the very last word, a letter in the word. That's wonderful. That's great. I have noticed um, the wonderful mirroring of the parrots and the flying uh, people. And my favorite detail is this right here. I'll zoom in. He, he's so, he's so it, it connected to the earth and the water and, and his place that he can hold a beam of light and he can touch and scoop the waters. It's really beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. Dice que, que, que le encanta ese detalle que la mano en la mano está como recogiendo como un rayo de luz o como así removiendo el agua y el rayo de luz en la misma mano. Eh, eso es lo que me, me interesa mucho eh, proyectar para que lo, lo interpreten de acuerdo a lo que ven, de acuerdo a la experiencia de cada uno, que in, le dé una interpretación propia, porque eso es lo que la pintura, mi, mi, mi trabajo es, es eso, hacer que los demás imaginen. Excuse me. I'm going to excuse myself. I was a, um, a little sick. So that's, that was an intentional that, that to, to create this, this sense of integrity and synchronicity between, between nature, the elements and, and man. So that, that was a really great, I hadn't noticed that Tola. So that's, that's really nice. The way they've just been scooped up with the hand. Maybe at this point, um, I can show a little bit about what we have in the collection and how I've um, been able to connect it to Jorge's practice uh, a little bit. And and then if we have time, we might still even go back to other images because it's so um, it's so illuminating to hear an artist speak about their work. Uh, so I wanted to show a little bit and feel free, Chrissy, at any moment to stop me and translate if you feel like Jorge needs to hear and understand. But uh, at the Low Art Museum, we're one of the few, if not the only, encyclopedic museums in all of South Florida. And we really have a depth of ancient American um, art. So Mesoamerican textiles, pottery, figures, um, uh, and of course, stone. And so here we have a stucco and paint Mayan lord or leader. Um, And you can see, I I clipped this little detail from uh, Jorge's painting, where we see the ancestor looking on. Now I understand it as the ancestor, uh, you know, participating in the present, right? And here we have this um, example of a very similar headdress and um, shape of face. And here's a stele, um, you know, which is really just means just a standing block. uh, or could be a marker, uh, a funeral marker, from 600 to 900. Uh, and again, it's a Mayan example, a uh, 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 carving in limestone of a Mayan leader. So I imagine, you know, Jorge maybe uh, grew up seeing these uh, images around. Would that be true? Jorge, eh, estos son dos, este, dos, dos piezas que tenemos del mundo prehispano tenemos un, eh, un, un, un señor maya que es, es al extremo izquierdo y luego una estela que es de esas, pie, de esas piezas que sea de estuco también mesoamericano maya entonces ella eh, la doctora Porter se imagina que tú habrás visto imágenes como estas no sí. en tu en tu en tu carrera sí. en tu infancia en tu tierra sí He says he does, yes. Yeah, beautiful. Another uh, artist that I understand is a, certainly Dr. Arce has explained to us as a, is a real um, influence 
uh, for uh, Dominguez Cruz is Diego Rivera. And I include here, this is, we do not have this uh, incredible mural. This is actually in Mexico City in the Palacio Nacional. Uh, but here is uh, Karl Marx, you know, talking with the farmers and the workers and the soldiers here to try to get them to activate and become revolutionaries. And I love down here, we can see, you know, under the symbol of the dollar, right? We have all these cleaned up, uh, you know, all men, you know, working by the light to keep producing, uh, to keep the machine of capitalism working. And in our art museum here, we have a pencil on paper, a drawing, very small drawing of a farm boy, Nino Campesino. And you can sort of sense he doesn't have shoes, and but he's very calm and patient. I have a feeling his hands are in his pockets, not because he's worried, but just waiting. There's a very patient look on the face. and. Uh, he's sort of looking very earnestly forward. And I have to say that reminds me of Deepak, the Nino de Maiz. You mm -hmm. know, there's the boy of the corn, there's the idea that there's a young um, child, uh, you know, who is sort of the hope, maybe. Is that, is that right? Porque eh, le, le, le resonó esa, ese, ese ese dibujo de Diego Rivera que tenemos en el museo un poco con el Deepak, o sea, la idea del niño que paciente que está allí eh, como un poco como un símbolo de esperanza. Sí, sí ese niño eh, es la muestra también de, eh, de lo que somos, de la identidad, eh, de, de, de ese alimento sagrado con, la, con lo que hemos que ha sido parte de nosotros, de nuestra cultura, como el maíz. Entonces, el nombre es Tipá, que era, era el niño, el dios del maíz. Así, se le, así en nuestras culturas podemos encontrar todos esos relatos, esas leyendas de, del hombre del maíz. Entonces, es ahí donde viene eh, esta, esta idea, ¿verdad?, de crear este personaje, este niño también que se está formando a través de los granos del maíz. Entonces, Vemos los colibrí que de alguna forma simbolizan la sabiduría para muchos de nuestros pueblos, de nuestras culturas. Entonces está brotando de la tierra y luego en esa conexión siempre con el, con el cosmos. ¿no? Entonces con el, en esa espiral de, de, de transformación de, de la vida. Aquí vemos, ahora sí que estoy representando lo que, lo que somos, lo que, lo que de alguna manera es nuestra identidad. That's, um, it was also beautiful. I hope I get to remember all of it. What he said was that, um, that last phrase, he said, the spiral of the transformation of life. And so the, the, the corn is a sacred, the, that sacred food, which nurtures us, but it's also the sacred food of the gods and the colibris, the hummingbirds on each side, the sunums are the ancient harbingers of knowledge. Um, they transmit in, in for many Mesoamerican, the Sunum for Mayan or the Colibri, the um, the Pochli, the Huitzil, Huitzil in, in, in Nahuatl. No, the, 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 the Colibris are very, um, very fierce animals at the same time that they're, um, they're delicate and they, tra and they, they transmit knowledge, but also ferocity because their wings are so quick and they're so animated. There's like a thousand aleteos per minute, you know, just to, for them to be able to also transmit the, um, the, the pollen from flower to flower. So there's this way in which the child is, is the, is the God of, or the, 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 the deity of, of the corn. So it's not really Nino de Maiz, it's like the deity or uh, the, the deity of the corn. I, I translated it wrong. I put the child of the corn, mm. it really, the, the, the deity, um, mm. the, the, the god of the corn, no, mm -hmm. but the small god, the child god. So that's really um, that sacred element in what he calls the the constant spiraling and transformation of life from corn to to boy to man to to um, colibri to cosmos. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that in the sky, there's also a spiral. Mm -hmm. 
a spiraling of the clouds. So there's this way in which it's it's all sort of revolving around each other. And um, if you've ever seen a, a hummingbird, the way they sort of almost appear to be standing still at the same time they're moving, it's, it's, it's that irony that is very important for many indigenous cultures. You never ever stand still, you're always in movement. But when you see a, a hummingbird being um, extracting the, 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 the nectar, they 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 move so quickly that it appears they're standing still, but they never are. I love it. Okay, so we also have back to our little farm boy uh, from Diego Rivera. Uh, and then the final um, influence that um, Dr. Arce mentioned earlier is Salvador Dali and other surrealists. And we have several small prints, um, but this one I thought sort of represented um, uh, a landscape and a surreal landscape, you know, uh, it's cr cracking apart. It's both completely zoomed in, but then also it's hard to tell what anything is uh, in the way that surrealists uh, do. You know, there's somehow the water has broken through this rock uh, and it's gushing out down into, but here are some like no problem. These little grasses are not being blown over. And I can't really understand what this figure is. It is it a person who's holding something or I'm not quite sure. Um, and perhaps if we could zoom in even further, we might be able to tell But I don't know if this is high res enough. But so it's not a real place, right? It's a place maybe in our dreams. And of course, for Salvador Dali, some of his dreams were nightmares. And so it's not all, uh, you know, a, a very beautiful place where he longs to be. It's something he's being kind of critical of the real world. Um, he's questioning uh, this, you know, rationality um, that was so um, present. Uh, and it, this, the idea of surrealism was also brought about during the second, you know, you know, the the world, basically brought on by World War One and Two, where you know these, um, you know, forces of of the, around the world, the European world mainly, but around the world, uh, are uh, coming into conflict and really creating uh, such destruction that one starts to wonder what is real and what is not. We also have a, a photograph of Dali made by Arnold Newman, and Arnold Newman is uh, renowned for his environmental portraits. So he takes a portrait not only of a person, but of his surroundings to give you a sense of the person by what's included in the surroundings. So somehow in Salvador Dali's uh, setting, this wire dropped down. And it just seemed exactly right. You know, it's sort of uh, emblematic maybe of his mind or his state uh, and the way that he's clutching his uh, his eyebrow here and kind of pushing it up with his hand kind of, you know, it looks kind of forceful and yet his face is sort of serene, but his eyes are wide. So there's something really going on um, with the way Dali is even wanting to have himself depicted. So questioning reality, giving us something that's a little strange, maybe a little frightening, um, but but also access to our unconscious, you know, permission to explore um, beyond the regular rationality uh, of everyday life. And no, maybe, so may, maybe we can talk uh, about that idea with this image uh, where this is, you know, not very exactly real and yet um, kind of um, hopeful also. Eh, no sé si entendiste, Jorge, pero lo que mencionó en la obra anterior, I don't know if you can go to the previous slide where you were talking about Dalí, Tola. Yeah. Eh, mencionó que al lado derecho vemos que hay como un, una brecha, un res, o sea, resquicio por donde está brotando el agua pero el agua no está aplanando, no está destruyendo, o sea, vemos los, los, las, la, el zacate o las hierbitas que no están siendo demolidas por el agua, sin embargo, hay, hay, hay agua que nutre, que sale por los, por los huecos, por los resquicios, por las quebrajaduras, pero de alguna forma crea, nutre y, y, y no es, es poderosa, pero no es destructora. 
Y otra, otra cosa que tenemos en el museo está esta imagen de, de, de Dalí, que eh, el fotógrafo Numen le interesaba mucho el medio ambiente y es interesante porque de repente cuando estaba retratando a Salvador Dalí se salió, se zafó una, un cable y se tomó la foto con el cable ahí zafado y de, de repente él se agarra de la ceja como abriendo ese espacio, ese resquicio, ese, ese, ese hoyo en la mente hacia lo onírico, el mundo onírico, el mundo del sueño, de las posibilidades, de todo que subyace debajo, el, el subconsciente, pero lo que subyace debajo de la tierra que vemos a manos derecha, que es esa quiebra que se rompe, se quiebra, la roca que se quiebra y crea por la que sale agua, vida. Y aquí tenemos este cable que de repente se zafa parte del mundo tecnológico y ahí se está dando cuenta Salvador Dalí. Entonces lo que quería la doctora Porter es que pusiéramos, si pudiéramos como contrastar estas imágenes con el cuadro tuyo. So you can go to the next slide, Dr. Porter. Con esta idea de, de, de esta mujer, este, de esta imagen poderosa, grandiosa y maravillosa. No sé si, si tienes algo que decir con respecto a eso. Así, eh, pues aquí también muestro a esta, este gran ser, ¿verdad? Poderoso eh, que nos ha dado la vida, que gracias a, a ella estamos aquí. Y pues ahí le hago ese homenaje con esa, en, ese, en esa escena explosiva eh, de, tra con, de transformación, de, de vida, de alegría, de poder, porque y donde todo eh, de alguna manera los, las nubes, el, el universo, eh, pues está... Eh, pues eh, como siendo parte ¿no? de, 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 lo que, de lo que está generando ella, está generando vida, eh, vemos eh, los elementos de la vida como el agua, eh, el aire, la tierra, eh, el fuego, entonces es eso lo que yo eh, proyecto aquí como la madre, la madre de la vida, la madre del universo. So um, again, he's, it's so interesting, Dr. Porter, that you noticed that you put that image of the, of the rock that where the water explodes yet, because mm -hmm. one of the um, sort of <clears throat> uh, metaphors that Jorge keeps using is this explosion of color, this explosion of life, the explosion of movement. So um, the visual palette is never uniform. There's no opacity in anything. There's, it's a lot, it's all sort of an ex um, a vibrant multiplicity and diversity. And so here he's, he's really paying homage to what he calls la madre vida, you know, the mother of life, the giver of life, dadora de vida, which is, you know, the, the mother earth, the cosmos. And you'll see that in all of its um, hues and tenors. And there's so much movement in this piece that there's not, even though the, 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 the it's it's grandiose you see the, the the female figure as like this occupying the visual optic center um there's so many different pieces to this painting so many different um nodules and points of reference that it's impossible to to like sort of disaggregate it you know it's mm -hmm. all part of one so i think that's really interesting i wonder um let me go back Do, does does Jorge think of the earth as moving? I mean, there's so much movement in the land. Um, almost no land is depicted as like solid. Like there's so much, like, is it alive? Si lo piensas como si la tierra estuviera vida, moviéndose, porque en ningún momento de los cuadros se nota como una tierra plana. O sea. Sí. Hay vida. Eh, ese es lo que me eh, es mi intención siempre eh, una pintura con vida con alegría con transformación con ese eh, en esos escenarios eh, tanto como eh, llenos de, de, de tanta historia 
de, de donde cuentan este, pues, diferentes situaciones y que cada uno, de acuerdo a su experiencia, lo puede interpretar. Y, y creo que cada una de las pinturas siempre está generando, está eh, cuestionando, está criticando y ese es lo que a mí me interesa mucho transmitir y compartir, porque eso es lo que siento que es para mí una gran obra de arte. So he just said that, yeah, that the land is always transforming, moving, um, reflecting upon oneself, criticize, um, critiquing. And for him, a, a grand, a, a, a great work of art is always reflexive in its, in its mm. approach. So there's no static earth. The earth is always um, moving um, in the sense that it's always inter there's a, the level of introspection and, and introspection that has to happen so that the land actually regenerates. Because for him, it's really important, this idea of, 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 it, of the painting and art and the earth being generative, you know, that has to, it has to display that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that really comes through. Uh, really comes through very strong as something quite unique um, and special. At this point, I want to invite any questions. We don't have to exactly end at 7.30, but um, if, if there's something pressing, um, feel free to type it in to the Q&A. Si alguien tiene una pregunta, por favor, se la puede poner español e inglés. Yo lo traduzco en el chat. I see I have some of my students here from University of Miami. I invite them to, to ask any questions. We have uh, Ned. We know, we know it takes, we have yeah. it takes time to type. So, so <laughs> it's okay. It takes time to type. Uh, and so I'm always in this role of waiting for typing to happen. Sophia, if you have any questions, feel free to chat to um, put them in the chat. Maybe Chrissy, could you talk a little bit about the program on um, Thursday? So What's great. happening? So while we wait for any questions, um, we invite you to the program on Thursday is a meet and greet. It's an informal reception um, because while it's beautiful that we have this um, online virtual event that we can then revisit, should we wish to, um, it's always great with regards, in, 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 with anything, with music and with art to meet the person. And since we have Jorge here, um, we will be inviting everyone to join us for a brief reception in Flipsy on the fifth, um, on the fifth floor. <laughs> and we'll have just some, some refreshments and we'll have eight of his pieces to display. Um, so if you'd like to come meet him and, um, some of the members of the Mexican cultural organization who helped to bring him. I will be there. Hopefully some of my students from Spanish will be here. Then we have um, this reception for him on Thursday, Flipsy from six to eight, try to come on the early side. Um, and um, we'll have um, some catering from Joanna's there to be able to receive Jorge and take a look at his pieces um, in first in person. So we have a question from Eva. Eva, can you put your question in the chat? Or you, I think you could possibly unmute, I hope. I'm or or to... Eva, if you can, you can unmute yourself. See if you can unmute yourself. I'm trying. Yeah, ahí. Ahí. Eh, pues mira, más que eh, eh, pregunta, más bien yo, yo quiero eh, felicitar al artista. O sea, veo estas, estas pinturas. Y, y tal y como él lo decía, o sea, hablan de vida, hablan de la historia de México, hablan de la historia de México, de la gente, de su cultura, los colores son vibrantes, son fuertes, eh, o sea, tú ves los cuadros, ya no, no ves por ningún lado tristeza, ¿no? Entonces lo veo, está súper joven. Eh, mucho orgullo porque también soy mexicana con mucho orgullo y muchas felicidades para para Franco muchas felicidades so she she congratulates the artist as a Mexican she sees these paintings and and they they're so um, alive and positive and given how young he is for an artist it's it's really sort of extraordinary that he has such um 
such a prolific um of to to both and so she she says that she's she's proud of his work and and all the colors the the brilliant vibrant colors and sort of the the way in which it celebrates but also crit it, it's a, a beautiful analysis an in-depth analysis a criticism but a celebration of everything um that mexican culture and mexican indigenous culture has to offer thank you jorge Gracias, gracias. Thank well, you, everybody. Thank yeah. you, everybody, for joining us. We'll be able to revisit this. Mm -hmm. um, we will put this on the AMS, um, the American Studies website, American Studies program website, um, also on the website for, I think it'll be on the Low Museum. And we invite you all to join us on Thursday with refreshments. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions for Jorge, you're welcome to meet him on Thursday in person. Thank you, Dr. Porter. You've been wonderful organizing this. And um, on such short notice, I really appreciate something, a, a place, an institution of learning and curation as important as the, as a, as the Low Art Museum, um, participating and really celebrating during what is Indigenous Peoples Month. So um, congratulations to Indigenous Peoples Month and to Jorge as an Indigenous person from um, Mata de Otate. Chontla, Municipio de Veracruz. Yes, and for bringing your beautiful paintings. As soon as you see the work, you have no, uh, you, you must immediately <laughs> give this person uh, pride of place. So yes. uh, it's, it's really exquisite. And they're even more enriched now that I've heard, uh, heard you talk about them, Jorge. So thank you for that.